Okay, this is Brendan, and uh, I'm going to do some more drawing today with uh, something random. And I actually have no idea what I'm doing. I just, uh, well, I do have some idea what I'm doing, but not that much. I can't see my pen. There it is. <clears throat> I'm going to go into Krita today. I'm not sure if I like this, uh, these dimensions. What I'm doing is, uh, I, like sometimes I'm drawing on some kind of theme or something, and I don't know why, I just felt like I had to get that out. Uh, I'm not even really into like tutorials or anything, but today, size canvas, I believe is what I'm looking for. I want a wider thing, like 4,000 by 2,000. Yeah, that'll work. Does that change? Yeah, it changes everything. Yeah, but actually my uh, intention with these videos, if um, anybody ever starts watching them, the, I've, I'm up to like, this might be my 20, 21st video or something. My original intention was to uh, have some fun with it. Up till now it's been more of a practice thing and getting a bunch of ideas out. I had so many problems to work out with uh, microphone and video. Actually, it was like a year in the waiting and I couldn't even get anything done really. Uh, because of so many different problems. <clears throat> so I'm like, yeah, right now I'm going in with some very vague inspiration, just doodling. I'm, I'm, today, well, I mean, it's a digital painting. I know that much. I felt like doing uh, some digital painting, and I'll do some talking while I'm uh, in the midst of it. This one here, by the way, if you go, if you want to go into full screen, it might be better. These, I usually get these uploaded at like uh, pretty, pretty high res. So if you want to go into full screen, you can do that. And um, I'll just tell you some stuff that I'm doing while I'm drawing here. What I'm doing here is this is a pretty good. Um, I like how they have this uh, this color wheel thing you can look at while I'm doing this, because like um, with grass this is like I'm just setting up some kind of scene um, I've noticed with playing with a color picker on a lot of photos that um, uh, yeah I keep saying um I didn't even finish my thought actually grass in the foreground is a bit more yellow than you would think it's not just like pure green and then as a lot of us know well I mean I guess not everyone knows it, it gets blue as it goes off into the distance. That's like a phenomenon of uh, just how color works. And of course I should have some kind of sky blue. Actually no, I don't even want that. I want some crazy like pink purple sky. Where's a vibrant color? Well, I'll make that happen later. I guess I gotta get lighter. Something like that. Yeah. There could be some random mountains going off over there. And uh, this is a great thing about digital painting. You don't really have to think so much about it in the early stages. I guess that's true with any painting. But yeah, with the grass, if, if you get like uh, one way to learn color, as I'm learning it myself, I'm not like a master at it, but I'm, uh, you know, I'm learning some stuff. One, one important thing with color is to be random with it. Another thing is to notice how it changes as it goes off into the distance. It gets more dull. Uh, if it's daytime, that might mean it, it's getting paler as it goes into the distance. Nighttime, it gets darker, stuff like that. And uh, actually, everything here right now is too it's too light, but that's too dark. Can I make this opacity darker? I want to make it a little bit darker. Because what happens, I want to make the sky look like it's kind of radiating. So to have that happen... Not with that color, something like this. And now I need my opacity, it won't come. And so, let's say here's white, that's going to be my, I don't know, white spot, the sun spot. Or where, it might not even be the sun, it might be where the sun's coming through. And there's clouds around that. <clears throat> and so, yeah, in the foreground the color should be more vibrant. And in the background, it depends, it depends. It can get whiter, it can get darker, depending on, you know, what your light is doing. So what I'm trying to do is get uh, something of, like, I'm not sure what the word is, some kind of, like, inspiration feeling coming out here uh, with the colors. Just using my imagination and saying, what if this was a, a mountainous scene here? You have mountains in the background like that. 
blurt some colors around. You know, you can have some darker ones and lighter ones like this. Might even bring the opacity down just a little bit there. Blur some things in. Well, if the light's up there, probably be coming down this way. You start to see little shapes, forms come out like this and that. And so just take advantage of all that, you know, scribbling around that I did and try and make some stuff out of it. I can have white for tops of mountains up here. Let's get that opacity back up. And I'll scribble that around like that. It's very unprofessional. These should probably even be smaller, like way off in background. I don't know. And then, um, yeah, what, what's going to happen? I'm not looking for some kind of stereotypical scene with, uh, you know, the the lake and the trees or anything. But at the same time. I just want to get the feeling in there. There's some darkness in the sky. It's like clouds. So the light will be coming out. <clears throat> you know, the light just shines through. Just shines through the clouds sometimes. <clears throat> One of those kind of effects. So it'll be something like this. It's coming through that way. Like that. Yeah. It might work. And then that color bounces all over the place. Like this. I'm starting to get a little bit of a feeling of depth and space here. So I'm looking for. And then uh, throw some perspective in there. We're going to have some objects. Now, like I said, I don't want to go for the... I do too much of this with the trees and stuff. I need some random kind of thing like a creature or uh, something. Maybe now's a good time to add a layer. Yeah. I have black with full opacity. What kind of thing could I have in the front here? Let me think. No, I know. I like sometimes you see paintings, and this is just like speed painting too. You might have some stuff in the foreground covering up like this. What would that be? I don't know. Don't know yet. Some things up here. Could be people, could be a horse. So this is your heavy foreground. We're gonna have uh, this could be maybe like um, you know that game Skyrim. And there's that scene. I guess there's probably a hundred and one posters for Skyrim. I don't know, but in the heavy foreground, they, you're looking at this grandiose mountain scene. In the heavy foreground, they have uh, just this dude. So like if I'm standing up here. Let's say there's some dude here, right? And let's say that dude is uh, standing there. And maybe he's, he's got his arms all proud. Or he's holding a sword or a stick, like a walking stick, and he's surveying the land. And he's got a bandana on that goes like off that into the. It's always like you know what I mean. There's always like something blowing off in the wind. So there's a dude up there in a heavy foreground. And this is the midground. What I should have done is separate it and had the background. As a matter of fact, I will do that. That's uh yeah, I don't that can stay as you know, I get worried sometimes. What if I put let me experiment. I'll put this blank layer I just put down there. What happens if I try to fill this up with like some color? You know color? This one with the bucket. And I've had this problem with Krita a lot, where I try and fill up... Uh, see, that time it worked. It's okay. Yeah, sometimes I try and fill up some layer. Let me turn the opacity down on that. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. You know, that's another thing I wanted to do. Some some things I've been looking at recently, they they might stick with a certain color. Um, as sort of a base color, even though it's not very natural, but it feels kind of alien and cool. Um, what do I want to get rid of? That's the background, should be the sky. Let me label these. This is going to be sky. This will be mid ground. I always hate using the keyboard. This will be foreground when I have the pen in my hand. So 
yeah, just forget about spelling. So midground will be here. That's the sky. So for this one, I can erase the sky, which is what I want to do, and see that the uh, yeah, that's right. The the background color should come out there, and so this will be mountains here. So I didn't like lose all the work I did, but I mean the idea is still there. But this is this is what's happening. I'm just redoing it. I just kind of feel like if these mountains are far away, they should have more slopes to them, like that, yeah, something like that. And this one is a super mountain, so that's okay. All right. So go to the background here again, and that's why I wanted. I wanted a dark sky, so I can come in with a really bright, sort of yellow thing like this. Oh, that's an eraser, right? Bring the opacity down. I'm not trying to say it's one of these sunshine things. It's like. You know, it's not like there's the sun right there, but there should be some clouds. So, like, the, well, I mean, the sun might be in that general area, but it's it's not like a circle, you know. We're not doing, like, the kitty drawing with the circle sun and the, uh, what are those other things I have? Sometimes you have, like, the, the circle sun, and underneath it you have the stick figure boy with his dog and that kind of stuff and, and the tree. But I want it to look like the sun's just coming through in a couple of spots. I don't know why I can't get it to go just the way I want. Yeah, something like that would be a little better. Maybe you can't even see where the sun lands. It's just this great radiant beam. It was like that. And not all beams go in the same direction. If you look on like a cloudy day, because wherever it can get through, that's where it'll go. Something along those lines. And that was the sky. That's all on one. Yeah, that's all on the background there, because the mid-ground got uh, toned uh, the what do you call it the opacity came down a little yeah but I actually liked it like that so what can I do I'll uh, just forget about it no add another layer here and I'll fill this layer with that same color this color okay fill no where's fill fill yeah there we go so that'll make me lose all that sun stuff. Well, it should. Why did it not? So this is here. That's there. Should be. Well, I, I guess it's the same thing, basically. Is it? So what happens if I merge this one down? Merge with layer below. Hide this. Show that. See, but that sky is still showing underneath, which I didn't want. I guess because, I don't know. We'll figure it out later. Anyway, because we don't even know. I don't even know what I'm drawing at. Let's figure that out. So I'm going to put one more layer in here. Let me see. There it is. Yeah. And, and get the opacity up. <coughs> That's better. And now I feel like those that mountain in the background is in the deep background. This guy is in the foreground. I'm not sure if we can make this out yet, but just bear with me. It should come start to come together soon. And in the mid-ground here is where we can have some kind of a focal point, right? Some kind of thing. What is that thing? Um, I don't know. Again, we're just, you know, we're drawing stuff here. Maybe it's a big city. You like cities? I need to work on my cities, but actually, I need to work on like close-up cities. I was having problems with. If you ever try to draw architecture, it's just not my thing. From a distance, okay, fine, but when you get up close, it can be quite tedious or boring. I like to do, I don't mind doing the shapes of building and like uh, skylines, cityscapes as I call them, <clears throat> but when you zoom in close and you really start to look at uh, the details of of a city, what are the details of a building even, that's where it gets kind of, well it gets a little boring for me. This came out way too green. It was like luscious green. I need more of a dull green because this is still off in the distance just a bit. Okay, so it's okay. I have the light up here. I guess this is kind of a green patch of land. And then in the front, we're going to have the, uh, the city-like thing. Didn't have to be a city, but the word city came out. And so be it. It's going to be a city. 
more like a castle maybe is what I'm thinking not just a city so do a castle try and break out of the norm all the way up here I do something that's interesting castles tend to have these high lookout points which is okay they can also have random ones here and there you're gonna have something like a main entrance maybe we'll have the two super lookout points here right and that there so this will be where the main gate is when you use the black just so you can see what I'm doing and then we would have like windows and stuff over here okay so I have that black on the canvas I can use it later a little bit of perspective going around this way my computer just keeps locking up ever since I had um I think it was since I updated the system that's always what happens you update your system and uh, it goes kaput makes you think that updates are bad They're supposed to be good okay so there you have the uh, you know, big fancy castle thing going on You probably end up having some more banners blown off in the wind it would technically be okay if these ones are blowing this way and his uh, bandana if I actually do stick with the bandana blows that way because wind blows in different directions at such a distance look at a tornado it's blowing in all different directions so something like that is acceptable right now I'm more worried about making this castle look interesting which could entail what? I'm trying to have fun here and not be too serious. Use some colors. You know, I'm tempted to make all wind things blow in the same direction because you know there's going to be that person who just says, like, nah, this thing is supposed to blow in the same direction. So maybe I will do that. Oh, but that's on the wrong layer anyway. That yeah, let me just erase that over there. Wait, erase. Yeah. So I'll go back to that later anyway. For now I'll keep focus on this. Let me see. Kind of random ideas come out of this. Might need some darker tones. Bring out the depth. Oh, I'm in erase mode still. Just a second, I'll be right back. Okay, I had to get some uh, iced tea. Um, actually, homemade iced tea. The best kind when you make it yourself. No sugar. I think I put no sugar in this one. I don't recall exactly. <clears throat> one thing I tend to do a lot with uh, these types of things, architecture or just random whatever it is I'll, I'll put a lot of detail on it which can be helpful but also I want to get something that makes it stand out from the rest uh, you know a lot of castles if you zoom in they have this kind of thing the old fairy tale castle it has that these slots in here that go like that so that make it easy to recognize as a castle but also it's a little old school and uh, traditional so I was watching uh, the, what's his name, Feng Zhu videos. He does digital painting and he's done work with, uh, you know, like Star Wars and uh, George Lucas kind of stuff as well as EA Games and all this stuff. And uh, he makes a lot of good points that I have taken to heart. It doesn't mean I can't do the stereotypical kind of castle with with that kind of thing going on um, it makes it easier to recognize but does it really you know is it bringing anything to the table is it new is it interesting <clears throat> that's something to be considered um, you can see the edge here I'm gonna bring the opacity down now so I can just play around that's a great thing about messing with the opacity is you can start to do stuff that doesn't necessarily need to be permanent. It's like I'm going into sketch mode here. And I can say here's some grooves come down here. This way. We have different angles. 
this always helps a lot to because I want to get a feeling of the the surface here and now this is this is not permanent this is me just saying this goes down this way and that goes down that way generally speaking but I'm doing it in like shorter strokes so later on I could blend it in or go over it and still see what I'm doing <clears throat> and they need a road to get up here that's the other part of doing stuff like this is a lot of the creativity can come out of functionality. This road might go up here and then wind down and come back down this way. Go down on a sharp slope. Go over that way. It's totally acceptable. Now they have a road. You, you might think of other things like do they need a water supply? I have my hotkey set up so I can just hit that zero key and go into that mode where I need to get the stuff I need. So now that I have all these different random colors on here, that's another reason it's good to like just blurt stuff down like that. <clears throat> I can um, just zoom into this mode, grab a color I want, and then get back at it. Put a little blue in here. <clears throat> blue is always good. Randomize it a bit. It's a little too random. So on the back side here is where the shadow is from the sun. It's a perfect place to put in some random colors. Because you get uh, complementary colors coming out here and there and other stuff. So there, even if you zoom back a little, you can see we have these foreground uh, mountainous things and there's a castle st starting to come up in the midground. In the background you have some kind of uh, you know mountains. Um, so I want to make it a bit more interesting. I'm not sure what else I can put in there. Just looking at a castle isn't really all that fun. It's something unique. Maybe it's on the back of a turtle. Is that like a giant turtle shell? But I already covered it up. Hmm. Well, I'll think of something while we're working on this. I'll start focusing on the details a bit more. I still want to keep these colors a little bland because it's off in the distance. Even this kind of brown that I started off there is uh, it's a bit sharp, all things considered. And eventually, we're going to have to fill in all these gaps. So I might as well do that now. I'm talking about the gaps in between uh, the pen strokes. A lot of people say when you're starting with digital painting just to use the uh, the standard brush, the soft edge or hard edge, either way. That's what I've been doing. I don't see, I, I mean, I did all kinds of other classical painting too with like oil paints and this and that. I actually do know when to use a uh, fan brush and when not. And, well, I mean, one of the answers to that question is whenever I want to, you know, it's, you can do whatever you want. But, uh, yeah, people get snobby when you get online and start talking in, in forums and stuff. Or uh, on Reddit or wherever. People will always solicit, or they'll, they'll provide unsolicited advice. Um, and then when if you ask for advice and you're really in, tr really in trouble, they'll give it to you. <coughs> that might help a little with the colors. At least I can see where it is now. And it's true that some of these spots here will have, uh, you know, stronger, brilliant whites from the sunshine, the sunshine, the sunlight bouncing off of them. We could do a lot of stuff with this. I'm thinking of when I was uh, years ago. I don't know where I was. Maybe in high school. I did a puzzle, and the puzzle had really cool art on it that I always liked. It had this castle on it. It was very colorful. Um, let me go in there. I'm still trying to think of these ideas. There's a, a couple of high points here. We have the castle in the middle. We have the guy over there. I feel like we could add just, I don't know, one more thing in there to try and make it special or unique. I'll keep thinking of something. A waterfall might be a little cliche if we put a moat around it. Uh, a little water around here wouldn't hurt it. 
I could see I could see some water coming in. What if water is trickling down in multiple paths here? It doesn't have to be a waterfall, but just some some kind of water. Water. People used to pick on me for my pronunciation of the word water. I got over it. It's water. Give me water or give me death. It's water. Water. And I'll use some black with lower opacity. Show the grooves around here. A little bit of water. And down this way. And of course we'll come in later and have some sunlight reflecting off that. When you draw on water, something I noticed is that uh of course we need shading over here, some cast shadow. That'll be something to work on while I'm thinking. The uh the thing with water is that I think there's like two or three parts to it. I, I really took a day or two, if it wasn't even a week, and just sat there and thought, you know, what is water? And I looked through a lot of pictures and I uh, got involved with like looking at the ocean and, you know, flat water, lake water, all different types of water. How do you draw the water? I know what water is. It's a thing that I drink and uh, take showers with. But I'm not sure... What are the qualities that make water look like water? And what I come to find is, for me, based on my study, my research, water is like a three-part thing. One is this bluish kind of color, which we always expect to come out of it, but not necessarily true. There's a lot of lakes and even, you know, oceans and seas out there, which the ocean will give off a, a muddy brown color because of the what because of uh, I don't know the dirt or the sand that's in there and so I guess whatever the water consists of I think a part of the blue a lot of the blue when you're looking at the ocean is based on the 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 sky basically reflection of the sky although I do think that there's just some natural blueness to water too it can't be described I'm not sure. I mean, we all know that water is clear, and that's all there is to it. But if you have a giant lake of water, and the sky is totally red, will the water also be mostly red without any blue to it whatsoever? I'm not sure about that. In some cases, I think the ocean gives water its uh, just it, whatever color it has. It has a bit of its own blueness to it. And so, yeah, there's all that stuff to consider. I need more shadow. And then also what was I saying? I lost my uh train of thought. Also the uh the reflection. So yeah, I was saying there's like two or three different parts to water and one part has to do with whatever natural color it might be, you know, in the molecules or the sand or the dirt of the water. Of course if it's drinking water it's probably crystal clear and the other part is what it's reflecting or what's behind it. So those are the three parts. It's you know, what's in it, what's behind it because it's clear and what's in front of it. So in this case we have a reddish sky and some yellow coming from the uh, the sunlight here. There definitely be some some red and some yellow somewhere in this what her what her and I'll show that later. But for me, just using the blue like that was a quick and easy way to uh, remind myself that I have some water, some kind of stream or lake coming down there. That's uh, not too bad. Hmm. Still not getting any inspiration. Let's keep going. See what happens. Let's go to the background layer. Is that this one? Yeah. That is the mid background layer. And since I already have colors there, I get my color selector, choose a color, get back into the opaque mode here, and just fill things out. What I do at this point is just try and make it try to uh make it look like it's not a um a bunch of random pen marks. 
and go into finer detail so you can't see the pen marks. Need this here, yeah. It's a little blurry. This way, you get a lot with uh, modern digital paintings. These types of speed paintings is. I'm going to bring this one up high here, just so it'll conveniently cover this dude who's going to be in the foreground. Maybe just go to the tippy top there, even. Like that. Yep. Yeah, with a lot of these modern digital paintings, you get all this um, sort of a transparent kind of brushy look, which at first I thought was very cool. And then when I started realizing it's because everybody was doing digital paintings and they all look the same, it was kind of not cool. Mountains should also have a, uh, a pattern to them. So you see this one here. If I were to suddenly make one like this and then like that, it would be out of place. They should all have sort of uh, not only a pattern, but almost like uh, hold on, I did something wrong there. Okay, yeah, kind of like a pattern, I guess, a flow, a, a rhythm or a frequency that shows they have been they have been blown by the same winds for you know millions of years or however long it is and they have the same uh, same environment about them just be similar angles and slopes and that doesn't look totally natural but oh well that's my answer to that problem a little bit like this and then get some other random colors in there a little brown you always notice on the color palette that brown doesn't actually exist, which is fine with me, as long as you realize that adding a little uh, darkness, a little black to orange is uh, the answer to the question. Because brown is basically dark orange, or at least that's how I gather it. <clears throat> you could also put a little blue in there. around here representing some uh, curves and grooves around the mountains because they also have a uh, rocky surface that's why I chose this uh, brown to come in here and try and represent some of that stuff who knows it could even be paths like if we go back to the theme uh, what I was saying with the uh, <coughs> get back up to this layer what I was saying about the, uh, the Skyrim kind of feeling it's not like I'm trying to be cliche and redo Skyrim. I want to have something unique here. This could end up being a uh, you know, totally different thing. Oh, we had a, one of those bridges up here. Would that, would that make it interesting? I'm not quite sure. Have a bridge. <clears throat> yeah, the general idea here. I feel like a lot of work. The, the color scheme, the, the fading off... Uh, you know, distance of the mountains is for me acceptable at this point. Uh, the foreground obviously is just black, so that's like nothing. Uh, sky needs a lot of work. Let's go into sky and try and find some appealing colors. Have the opacity turned down just a bit. See, it's great how you can be on separate. Uh, separate layers like this and uh, just go in and work on this layer without worrying about that one. Alright, now to get that sun poking through the clouds kind of feeling, some of the clouds are going to cover up the area where the sun is here just like this. And others are not like that. I think no matter what I do, at this point, yeah, it's a little dark, but it's okay. Mm. Is that the right color? Yeah. I want to get even brighter for this area here. Why does it look muddy? Go up this way. Is that white? Yeah. Okay. 
no matter what I do at this point, I don't think I'm going to lose these uh, sun rays I have because I'm just touching around the higher areas up here. What I'm going to do is go into these dark, some of the darker areas, and show that the the sun is reflecting off the corners, the edges of of these clouds, like that. If you didn't know, these are clouds. Now you know. So yeah, that gives a little bit of the feeling there, just just a touch. And you know, I, I'm not sold on these sunbeams going in any particular place. As far as I'm concerned, they could be going back into. Uh, they might be hitting even behind the mountains, or maybe they're going to come up and, you know, smack that guy right in the face, and he's going to get a sunburn. These are all plausible scenarios for me. <clears throat> so that helped to push the sky back a little bit. And yeah, I kind of feel like we're going from back to front now and front to back. We keep going back and forth. I'm still waiting for some inspiration for this middle part here. Basically, we got a big mound of dirt with an ugly castle on it. And that's, you know, that's my honest opinion. I'm sure you wouldn't uh, disagree too much. I mean, it's not that bad, right? It's okay, but it's not really exciting. Maybe. You know what we could do is have some, I know what we'll do, we'll have some cool creatures like coming out of it, like flying, giant flying eagles or something. So, a moment ago we were talking about, I'm even going to do another layer for that. Let me put that one right here in between the foreground and the midground. <clears throat> but I'm not sure what they're going to be yet. Flying creatures. That's what came to my mind suddenly. I just saw flying creatures there. I thought that would be cool. Flying creatures. No full opacity. What if they're like giant birds? See if you do giant birds, a couple of different things could happen. One in, one is people will say, "Oh, it's like, um, you know, you're, you're trying to be just like the the Lord of the Rings. You might as well put Gandalf up there, right? Just like this, and I have these guys with their they're like giant eagles. Have them like that." I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be happy with that scenario, really. Another is I could do dragons flying around there, which I think I can get away with. Let me try it. Get into normal mode. The thing is, if you do a dragon, we had like multiple dragons flying around. What does it mean? Maybe they're attacking the castle even. Is there meaning to that? Or maybe there's no reason for it. doesn't matter. I always have problems when I'm thinking about a dragon flying. I don't want his wings to look like he's just there posing for you. But also, you know, what, what exactly does a dragon flying look like? And especially when you're doing it from a distance. So I want you to get a dynamic look at his head like this, but at the same time, make it look like his wings are busy flapping off this way. There's a different way you can do the wings. Do like bat wings would make him look a bit more evil. Like that. This might end up looking kind of cool because where he fills in the space right there where I put him, it's just almost blocking that sun, and he could, yeah, it'd give kind of a dark, ominous kind of look like he's flying up and. Maybe he's about to attack. I, I think that was what we were looking for, basically, as a dragon. I, I like dragons. I've always liked dragons. And that's what I'm uh, I'm into, really. So I'm going to stick with uh, me. As you notice, I was trying to avoid like all these other cliche things. Get something unique, or else it's not fun. Sometimes you draw just for practice. Um, but for me, I don't know. I just... I just want it to be unique or else I, I didn't really feel like I'm having fun unless it was unique. <clears throat> okay. Oh yeah, and then we could have uh, see how you can see the color coming through his wings right now. And you're thinking that's oh, because I didn't finish drawing it. But actually, what if his wings are just a bit transparent? So that'll come through anyway. That, that'd be kind of cool too. Not completely transparent, but since the sun the the light of the sun is beaming on it it'll you know give a rosy kind of 
uh, glow to the uh, the flesh in his in his wings. Do I need horns? Nah, I don't need horns. You can put horns on your dragon. Mine don't need them. But he's gonna need arms or something. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna take a break, and you'll see me not take a break. I'll be back in a second. Okay, actually, what happened is um, this is the uh, the end of this episode because uh, I just I was looking at the the previous videos and it totals up to almost 40 minutes already. So this will be like a two-parter, and the next one I'll do something like a time lapse and uh, a little bit more talking. I think this is going to end up being a good painting. So uh, if you watch this one, then click on my name and find the other videos or search for it or something and look for a part two of whatever this ends up being called and we'll see you in a bit thank you